Hey guys, welcome back to One Day AI, your go-to channel for all things AI. Today, again, we have a jam-packed episode covering some of the most exciting development in the AI artificial intelligence space. It just keeps happening, so I have to keep covering all this stuff. So we will be diving into the latest on GPT-5, Google's new robot, and China's advancement in AI. So let's get started. A brief intro about me, I'm Varnit, the founder of Flourish.ai, an AI consulting and development agency. If your business had need help with AI, the link is in the description below. First, uh, GPT-5, there's been a lot of chatter recently about the future of AI and the concept of Gardner hype cycle. Many believe we are at the peak of inflated expectations and heading towards the trough or disillusionment. But hold on a second. While it may seem like AI development has slowed down, remember the impressive model releases we have seen this year alone. We haven't even come close to exhausting our available compute power. The most recent AI model have only been trained with up to $100 million. Imagine what we could achieve with billion dollar or even $10 billion training runs. The potential improvement due to scaling laws mean that AI advancement are far from over. Despite the skepticism, AI is poised to impact nearly every aspect of our lives. Despite what other people think, we're, we're not at diminishing marginal returns on scale up. Um, and like, I, I try to... I try to, you know, help people understand, like, you know, there there is an exponential here. And, like, the unfortunate thing is you only get to sample it every couple of years because it just takes a while to build supercomputers and then train models on top of them. Uh, and, and so the the next sample is coming. Uh, and, like, I, I, you know, I can't tell you when and I can't predict exactly how good it's going to be, but it, it will uh, almost certainly be better at like the the things that are brittle right now where you're like oh my god like this is a little too expensive or it's a little too fragile for me to use like all of that gets better like it'll get cheaper and like you know things will become less fragile and then like more complicated things will become possible like that that is the story of each generation of these models as we've scaled up Next thing is about potential of future AI model. Now let's talk about the future AI models like Gemini 2 and GPT-5. People often overlook what these models can truly accomplish. For example, the upcoming iteration like Gemini 2, Cloud 3.5, Opus, and GPT-5 are set to revolutionize our perception of AI capabilities. The advancement in coding and user interaction alone are game-changing and we are just scratching the surface. Next thing is Gemini 2. There's been a buzz about a new model appearing in the chatbot arena. This is where leading AI labs test their models in the wild. Recently, a Gemini test model was spotted, speculated to be either a Gemini Vision model or Gemini 2.0. Google's aggressive approach to AI development suggests they are pushing boundaries and Gemini 2 could soon be a major player in the AI space. One particularly impressive demonstration involved geolocating a person's location based solely on a photo taken on their phone. The model's ability to recognize the location either through image analysis or data from Google is astonishing. Next thing is OpenAI's text-to-speech API. A quick update for OpenAI developer: the text-to-speech AI is now available in the playground. This feature is called. This feature allows ChatGPT to talk back to you, adding a new dimension to user interaction. It's a fun tool. Uh, I, just, I just thought that you would like to know about it. Every moment is a new beginning filled with endless possibilities. Embrace the beauty of today and let your heart be your guide. Remember, the best is yet to come. Next thing is about risk of AI persuasion and propaganda. Now let's, let's touch on a critical topic, that risk of AI persuasion and propaganda. AI systems often provide balanced opinions, but detecting when they are subtly influencing our views is challenging. As these systems become more persuasive, especially around sensitive time, like in the time of elections, right? Their impact on the society could be profound. They can change the society by changing our views about a specific, uh, a specific nominee, right? OpenAI and other developers need to navigate these waters carefully to maintain public trust. I do think there are, there are major risks around persuasion. Um, Propaganda. Where, you know, you could, you could persuade people very strongly to do specific things. Mm -hmm. Um, you could control people to do specific things, um, and I, I think that's incredibly scary um, to con control society 
to to go in a specific direction. With the current systems, uh, you know, they're very capable of persuasion and influencing your your uh, way of thinking and your beliefs. Um, so, and, and this is something that we've been studying for a while, and I, I do believe it's a real issue with AI. It gets majorly exacerbated. Um, so, especially in the past year, we've been very focused on how to help uh, election integrity. Um, and there's there are a few things that we are doing. So, number one, we're trying to prevent abuse as much as possible. And so, that includes improving the accuracy of detection, political information detection, and understanding what's going on in the platform and taking quick action when that happens. So that's one. The second thing is reducing political bias. So you might have seen that ChatGPT was you know, criticized for being overly liberal. Mm -hmm. um, that was and Elon. You're too woke, right? <laughs> Well, uh, it, there were a few other voices, but you know, the, it, the point is that it wasn't intentional, and um, we work really hard to reduce the political bias in the model behavior, and we'll continue to do this, um, and also the, the hallucinations. Mm -hmm. um, and then the third thing is we want to point people to the correct information when they're looking for where they should be voting or voting information. Next news is from China. It seems they have taken the lead in the AI once again. China's rapid development of frontier models like SenseTime has reportedly surpassed even GPT-5, GPT-4 and Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. While it is difficult to verify these claims without access to their models, the competition is heating up. It would be fascinating to see side-by-side -side comparison of China, Chinese and Western AI models. A recent demo showcased SenseTime's capabilities featuring a chat system with real-time accuracy. The speed of their development is remarkable and it would be interesting to see how these models perform against the best from the West. Next news about Google's Google Gemini 1.5 Pro and with robots. Uh, let's talk about Google Gemini 1.5 Pro integrated with robots. These robots equipped with million token context then successfully navigated real-world environment using human interaction and video tours. This advancement highlights the potential for AI-powered robots to assist in various settings from optics to complex uh, industrial environment. Hey robot, can you take me somewhere to draw things? Okay, thinking with Gemini. Please give me a minute. Let's go. Congratulations, you've reached the goal. You can now draw on the whiteboard. Thanks robot. And the last news about Elon Musk, Optimus, and Neuralink integration. In more robot news, uh, Elon Musk news, Optimus design is expected to be unveiled later this year, promising exciting integration with Neuralink. This could enable controlling robots with our thoughts. That's crazy. Being able to control robots with just our thoughts, merging AI and human capability in an unprecedented way. We will be keeping an, a close eye on this development. Really, the, the neural device just should work generally for anything that's got a Bluetooth interface. Including potentially an Optimus. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, oh, okay. Yeah, you, you, yes, you could communicate with Optimus. Uh, yep, absolutely. Uh, Optimus, will, well, you, we also, you'll also be able to talk to Optimus, but like... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Why not just beam it? <laughs> but you could just, yeah, and, instead of talking, sure you, could just, you could just beam it directly. Or if, if someone has lost the use of speech, then, then they can still communicate to an Optimus. Uh, they, they can communicate telepathically to Optimus or to, by Bluetooth. Um, and, um, and, and so even if someone has you know, completely lost the ability to speak, they could still uh, con control Optimus or their computer or phone. I mean, also, like, if you have an Optimus and you have a Neuralink, you can just directly map the brain signal to control the physical arm of the robot. And that's a very meaningful thing. Like, if you're, if you know folks that have spinal cord injury, one of the biggest requests is to be able to scratch yourself. This is something that is quite annoying, actually. Um, and if you have a scratch on your face, you, you can't fall asleep until you scratch it. Uh, you know, it's very convenient to be able to move something physically towards you to be able to scratch. Similar things like eating food, you know, if you need somebody to feed you, it's very hard to have you know, dinner with friends in a way that is... You know, sort of a normal 
uh, social experience. And so if you can feed yourself, pick up a fork and actually eat a piece of chicken on your own, uh, you know, that's a big deal. Uh, it prevents and saves a lot of interactions with caretakers and other people in your life that you rely on to take care of. So it really increases your I think an exciting possibility long term also is to say um, if you take parts of the Optimus, Optimus humanoid robot and you combine that with a neural link, let's say somebody has lost their arms or legs, uh, well, we, we could actually attach an Optimus arm or Optimus legs uh, and uh, do a neural link implant so that the, the motor commands from your brain that go, would go uh, to your, your biological arms now go to your robot arms or robot legs. Um, and again, you'd, you'd have basically cybernetic superpowers. Actually, so the latency from the Neuralink to your hand would probably be slightly faster than it is yeah. just to go to your physical hand. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine, like, if you're a piano player or a, I don't know, anything that requires extremely fast you know, hand movements, that you could actually have a pretty imbalanced right hand robotic arm control versus left hand physical arm control. That's one of them. Yeah, like I said, it's just kind of a cyberpunk Deus Ex you know, future yeah. where you have cybernetic upgrades that are actually better than your biological uh, limbs. So guys, that's it for today's AI news. Uh, I know a lot of AI news videos are coming in and a lot of new stuff is coming in and that's a lot to keep up with. But uh, yeah, that's it. That, that, that's what the AI news is. Uh, AI is all about. It just keeps on revolving every single day. So yeah, that's it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe and, be, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much.